mean, I, I think part of that is building a culture of awareness. I think part of that is also uh, respecting the recommendations um, of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and uh, actively working to embed those recommendations where possible and um, modeling um, the expectations uh, that we have for the entire institution. We can empower our students and our people with awareness and with recognition, um, awareness of the many successes and impacts and constitutive influence that Indigenous people have had and continue to have on the identity of Canada, and recognition of Indigenous people's history, um, a history that is fraught with pain and struggle um, and atrocity. And we can take that awareness and that recognition uh, to inspire action. I think we have to consider how do they feel when they walk onto our campus? How, what experiences do they have in the classroom? What experience do they have with our service areas? You know, I think it's brilliant and it's wonderful that we have a Center for Indigenous Learning and Support, but it shouldn't be that that's the only place that our students feel they connect with. If we truly want to be a campus that is what we say it is, which is welcoming to all our students, then I think listening to our students and listening to their experiences is fundamental. Rather than us providing a checklist of the things we need to do, it's more along the lines of listening and being open and hearing how we need to do it as well. We have to listen more we have to connect with the community about what the lived experiences are right now. Because if we do that, then that can drive the spirit of our commitment to change. Well, I, I'm really um, encouraged um, and impressed by how how far reaching so far what we've done just in a very short space of time. I'm happy to see that our center has grown here, but I think there's always uh, a need for improvement and equity because we have three campuses and I think one major facet that would help get the, the messaging out and help build an inclusive environment for Indigenous students is having space at each campus. And there may be a need for finding maybe a volunteer system, maybe working with Indigenous students that want to get more involved and help spread the messaging uh, at the other campuses so they can build more of that holistic environment of uh, Indigenous support. A center only at one campus is problematic. I like the center that we have now, that it's, it's visible, that you can see it, but it needs to be at all of our campuses. And it not ne just needs to be visible physically. It needs to be visible in everything that we do and in our attitudes. Making sure we understand what the calls to action in the Truth and Reconciliation Report are um, is, is essential. Um, there needs to be much more funding for our Indigenous Center for Learning and Support. Um, the money needs to be there um, and, and, and we need to do more than just pay lip service. And I think there are ways that we could transform, um, you know, not just the Medicine Garden, but other places on campus to recognize and acknowledge the land and the ancestors who called this land um, home for generations before us. Yeah, I think we need to see more Indigenous creative work around the physical landscape. I really want to see contemporary voices, Indigenous contemporary voices, and how things are interpreted and not how we as non-Indigenous people would like to see Indigenous work. So I want to see real source of what it means to be um, in this Canadian environment. We have to listen, we have to be open, we have to understand. We have to work on a, on a daily basis to find supports. We have to be inclusive. We have to review our curriculum. And we have to recognize and understand uh, uh, our populations. And so something that I think about a lot is how to support and promote Indigenous research uh, and Indigenous scholars and Indigenous knowledge systems. Um, one of the Truth and Reconciliation calls to action is around research as a way to help advance understanding of reconciliation. And so I think um, 
it's really important though that in, in doing that work and in promoting and supporting Indigenous research, that is done in partnership uh, with Indigenous communities. Uh, in the not so distant past, a lot of research was done to or for Indigenous people uh, rather than by or with Indigenous people. And so I think non-Indigenous researchers need to be prepared to play a supporting role in that work. Yeah, again, from that position of building um, curriculum that takes into consideration Indigenous worldviews and indigenizing the education in very strong, constructive ways is very key. And I think we could probably do more around, um, uh, you know, breadth electives, um, even around that education piece. So I think in addition to that, um, there are obvious financial barriers and administrators uh, uh, at post-secondary institutions um, don't always necessarily have the opportunity to remove financial barriers, but we have the ability to recognize them, uh, to work with uh, the Centre for Indigenous Learning and Support, for example, at Sheridan, um, and to do something about that, to advocate for um, either uh, bursaries, scholarships, uh, to work with our community partners, to provide more access and to really reduce the um, economic burden of post-secondary education for, for our learners so that they can be successful and generations from now we'll look back and see that this was a turning point in our history and we have a, a much stronger Indigenous First Nation community in Canada because of it. It depends on your discipline really but there's lots of ways to you know bring celebration of Indigenous content and cultures into the classroom, um, bring Indigenous voices into the classroom as well but I think you know all educators should be taking a hard look at their curriculum, first of all, and making sure that uh, the content is there. But it's also about how do we take our learning and embed it into our, um, our campus, into our learning, into our curriculum, into the ways we support students and into the ways we support each other. You know, being a center of creativity, that we can find ways to uh, include the stories, research, um, and individuals um, in the curriculum so that, again, we're all learning together. So it, it's the only way we're going to really affect change. And when colleges and universities work, we cultivate citizenship, we cultivate leadership. And so uh, thinking about what Indigenous learners need uh, in terms of not just earning their credential at Sheridan, but uh, in terms of, of building their sense of, of leadership and um, uh, advocacy, I think is really important. So what we teach and how we deliver that content, um, I'm really excited uh, about resourcing in the Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, we need resources, we need um, uh, support from, from Indigenous leadership, Indigenous knowledge keepers to deliver that content in a way uh, that reflects Indigenous ways of knowing. What Sheridan can continue to do is foster opportunities for those folks who maybe don't know much about uh, Indigenous peoples or Indigenous history, is to provide more opportunities for them to learn, for them to listen, for them to understand. And then there's an even greater opportunity, I think, for the individual, for the institution, to think about where do we go from here. Yes, we're infusing it in our classrooms. We're building spaces. We are, you know, honoring our land and, and, and recognizing that the land we work and play and live on. And we're doing those things, but we have to continue. Um, that I think that Sheridan is creating a safe space for students and for faculty and for staff. Um, but again, there's always room for improvement and to do more. So. Those who are able to, I think it's important again to share that story within the classroom setting, um, to create safe spaces on campus for Indigenous students, um, and to ask hard questions sometimes for those non-Indigenous students who may have them. Um, it's also important to sort of dispel myths and to um, speak in a, you know, I guess in a voice of truth, that we acknowledge the harm that was done, but also kind of what we need to do to move forward. For not only saying we will do it, but doing it and then going back and checking and saying, okay, what else can we do? How else can we do it? How better can we do it? What else is needing? And reaching out to our people and our Indigenous peoples and saying, 
We know we cannot do this without you. We're not doing this for you. We are doing this with you, with your guidance, with your, you being our compass. So we know that we're doing the right things. But then for Sheridan as a whole, it's again to continue to move forward and not just do it because it's popular or because we're obliged to do so, but to do it because we ought to do it. Thank you.